Hi everyone. Um, I've been praying about the word the Lord gave me on January 8th, I will take peace from the earth. And then the vision he gave me, um, or not a vision, the dream he gave me um, a few days ago, and I have the video up about war. Um, and so I've been praying about those things and asking him to reveal, um, to confirm actually that war is coming even upon America. And um, he gave me a vision last night. And when I woke up, I had the vision. And then um, when I woke up, it was uh, 3.33 in the morning. <laughs> so I'll get into those in a second. But um, first it was an egg. Um, it was a picture of an egg. It looked just like this, except it was not cracked. So it was just an egg. Okay, so I have an egg here. And then underneath it, underneath the egg was 911 slash war. And so it just said 911 and then a, a forward slash war. And so um, I was like, okay, well, 911 and war make, you know, I was like, you know, that makes sense, but an egg, okay, so I was like, but the Holy Spirit gave me understanding of the egg, and then I went ahead at, this morning and looked up um, some further symbolism about it. So what the re Lord revealed to me with the vision of the egg and 9-11 war was um, that an egg is um, ready to be cracked open, whether you're going to eat it or it's going to hatch. Um so the destiny of an egg is to be cracked open and so that symbolizes destruction um, but once it's cracked open there's either nourishment inside or for the person consuming or the animal consuming it or um, new life that comes forth which is a chick so um, there'll be destruction before you know we're with the Lord, we're, you know, before the rapture, and also um, before the rapture or the millennial reign, however you want to, you know, before we're with him, and um, there'll be some destruction and war, and, uh, but there'll be new life after, so we'll be raised um, incorruptible. Um, a blessing comes from, you know, the blessing of this egg comes from de the destruction first. And that's what the Lord revealed to me. So there definitely was going to be a cracking or a, a, cr a crushing of our nation. And so then this morning, as I, before I prepared this video, I um, looked at symbolic meanings. This is fisheaters.com <clears throat> symbols. Now, I celebrate Resurrection Day, the resurrection of Christ, but not necessarily with bunny rabbits and painted eggs. Um, a lot of those are pagan in nature, and um, we're not celebrating fertility, but we are celebrating the new life that Christ gives us. So um, everything that Christians hold on to the world and the devil has twisted, you know, to make it way off um, kilter. So we have to make sure that we, um, if we're using the egg as a sim symbolism for the birth and rebirth of Christ, that we, you know, we focus on Christ and his resurrection, not on the Easter bunny bringing us colored eggs. So with that said, that one of the symbolisms for the egg on a Christian level is representative representative of Jesus and that new life that he gives us. But the <clears throat> meaning I found interesting here was another level of symbolism is that the egg represents the creation. So it's God's creation and the life that it holds that he made, um, the elements and the world itself with the, with the shell representing the firmament the vault of the sky where those fiery stars lie, the thin membrane symbolizing the air, the white symbolizing the waters, and the yoke representing the earth, and how it's all contained and the Lord created it. 
okay and um, it's under his care so I like that and if that was tr if that's the symbol he meant in the vision that you know the the egg represented the earth and his creation um, it headed towards being cracked or opened is of course it being destroyed okay <clears throat> and then this site ydr.com it has different um, meanings different interpretations and meanings of eggs but the Jewish um, symbolism of eggs here was interesting at Passover an egg is placed on the cedar plate as a symbol of the traditional festival sacrifice offered during the days of the temple in Jerusalem it also represents the new life of freedom the Israelites experienced after 200 years of 210 years of slavery in Egypt the egg has significance in other areas of Jewish culture as well typically an egg is served alongside other round foods at the meal of um, condolence following a funeral service as well as the prescribed times in the Jewish calendar when community-wide mourning is observed for various historical events said rabbi okay by seeing and consuming such foods we are reminded of the circle of life <clears throat> even in the face of death danger and destruction we are to be hopeful of all the promise that a new life can bring so again representing new life coming from shattered or destruction or death or danger um, so that was interesting because seeing 9-11 and war underneath the egg and then reading this sim symbolic meaning um, we know that we have new life in Christ and he's gonna he promises a, us eternal life in him and um, we'll all be resurrected one day um, to everlasting life um, but even though before that life you know the chick comes out of the egg in the face of death danger and destruction it has to be cracked it has to the chick has to fight itself out of the egg it has to break the egg itself and it has to actually break free um, from the egg so in the in in the midst of that danger and destruction um, of that shell we're hopeful of all the promise that a new life can bring so I thought that was interesting and of course the Christian view is <clears throat> it's representative of Christ and um, his resurrection and um, so I didn't see it cracked in my dream it was just a whole egg and like I said it said 911 slash war so then I looked at 911 <clears throat> and it's interesting when you look at the meaning of 9-11 in the Bible <clears throat> if you look up different references for chapter 9-11 <clears throat> sorry um, we know that it's, it's some, we know that the tr World Trade Centers were taken down on 9-11 September 9-11 and um, it's it that had that was great calamity and death okay and so um, and we also know that it's symbolic of our telephone system 911 is emergency but incredibly it says here the Bible shows us that 911 is more likely a God defined number symbolic of the Lord's return to protect his people as well as the Lord's judgment on nations who have turned away from him so I thought that was very interesting because um, that's what he told me on January 8th was I will take peace from the earth and he's in control of all things even opening the seals and the second seal we know is war and we know that Ezekiel and Isaiah they all prophesied of um, the final battle Armageddon's at the end of the seven year um, tribulation but there's going to be wars and rumors, rumors of wars that lead to that and even that final battle there's going to be skirmishes that um, lead to that final battle and so we know <clears throat> that the Lord is going to we see revelation that he's going to uh, reap judgment on the whole earth and if that egg is symbolic of the whole earth and his creation he's the one that is gonna um, send judgment and destruction upon it 
So I thought that was very interesting that 911 symbolized that in the Bible. So the Tower of Babel at 911, if you look at Genesis 11, 9, 9, 11 backwards, it says, therefore, its name was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of the whole earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the whole earth. It says, well, what does the number 911 mean? So why is it associated with calamity or curse to nations? So it says, don't try to fit all the examples of 911 as you can imagine it, but consider the evidences together when you consider the possibility. And it says, when you begin to take in the thought about what God might be doing with the number symbolism, both in the Bible and in our world, it will change your image of the power of God to be able to relate to his creation. <clears throat> so right here, this was very interesting. The 911th Bible chapter is Haggai chapter 2 which is the wrath of the Lord on Israel because they had turned away from God and did not come back. So that was, um, when I saw this just, you know, like a half hour ago, it was significant to me and this vision I had because um, the Lord is going to pour out his wrath. <clears throat> Sorry, in the morning it's hard because my sinuses are all draining. <laughs> um, he's going to turn away from the nation that has not stayed with him that has turned away from him and America as a whole has done that okay um, I was very appalled and I'm and I'm sure the Lord is too that um, as a Christian nation now which you know and this is not this is there's many sins that are upon people in America um, I won't even get into it but I was appalled at some of the news I found out as um, regarding laws that they've, um, uh, you know, put into motion, and just look at the abortion rate, and it's it's just really sad that this nation has turned away, turned its back towards the Lord. So, not. In individual people, Christians like you and I, but the nation as a whole. So it says here in Haggai 2.6, For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more in a little while I am going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea also, and the dry land. I will shake all the nations, and they will come with the wealth of all nations, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Jeremiah 9.11, I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a haunt of jackals, and I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without inhabitant inhabitant okay if you look up the 1911 19,111th verse Jeremiah 621 therefore says the Lord behold I am laying stumbling blocks before this people and they will stumble against them father and sons together neighbors and friends will perish okay so um, I'm going to go back down here to <clears throat> Jeremiah 19.11 um, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Just so will I break this people and this city, even as one breaks a potter's vessel, which cannot against, again be repaired, and they will bury in Topeth, because there is no place for burial. And then Revelation 11.9 speaks of the battle of Armageddon. Okay. Um, Daniel 9.11 Indeed, all Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, not obeying your voice. So the curse has been poured out on us, along with the oath which is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, for we have sinned against him. <clears throat> and then Hosea 9.11, As for the Ephraim, their glory will fly away like a bird. No birth, no pregnancy, and no conception. Okay, and Genesis 9-11, I will establish my covenant with you. <clears throat> and all flesh shall never again be cut off by the water of the flood, neither by there again by a flood to destroy God, the, the whole earth. So he promised, that's where his promise of, um, but that was his judgment of the great flood. And we know the Bible talks about the destruction coming as by fire this time. Um, so there's a lot. Revelation 9-11 they have a king over them, the angel of the abyss. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon. And in the Greek, he has the name Apollyon. So, um, 
Okay, and then Nehemiah 9.11, you divided the sea before them, so they passed through the midst of the sea on dry ground, and their pursuers, you hurried into the depths like a stone into raging waters. So, um, destroying the evil men. Um, and then Hebrews 9.11, his return to the earth, um, Jesus, so that promise of new life, but when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this creation. So anyways, I'll leave a link. I thought that was interesting. And then we know the number three is symbolic of the Lord, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then um, three in the Bible is divine fullness or completion. I woke up at 333. And then I've talked about the number 33 before. Um, so anyways, there's a, there's a number of three. And everything, even especially in Revelation, um, talks about, you know, there's, there's, you know, holy, holy, holy. And then the one who was and is and is to come. And then there's, you know, three and a half years and three and a half years. And um, three days were enough to prove that Jesus had conquered sin, death, and the grave. And so... The number three is symbolic of the Lord, and um, 33, and I've given this link before, um, is connected to promise or the promises of God, as well as um, judgment. So it says right here, it also derives some of its meaning from the total number of times three or third is used in the book of Revelation. Um, it's the product of three times 11. It can represent God's judgment, because three times 11 is 33. Um, so God's judgment and revelation illustrates God's complete final judgment of the world, which is ultimately accomplished in the three and one, one and a half years leading up to the second coming of Christ. So the last three and a half years, um, but it's connected to the promise or promises of God, as well as to, um, the eternal promises to not destroy the entire world again with a flood, except by fire. And so that, again, leads me to the destruction of the egg, but then the promise of eternal life, the new life that comes forth from that. So the, um, the judgment of the earth, and then the new life, then our new life with him after that. Um, Jeremiah 33, 3, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So if, if it went in doubt, Pray out to the Lord and ask him because he will answer you. Amen. And then Isaiah 33, 3. He's been showing me to read through Jeremiah and Isaiah, um, which I have not done fully. I haven't sat there and read through them straight, read different portions of them and studied different parts of them, but um, I need to be obedient and read through them straight. Um, but... A prayer in deep distress, Isaiah 33.3, thought this was an interesting verse. At the noise of the tumult, the people shall flee. When you lift yourself up, the nations shall be scattered. Um, so, O Lord, be gracious to us. We have waited for you by their arm every morning, or be their arm every morning. Our salvation also in the time of trouble. At the noise of the tumult, the people shall flee. When you lift yourself up, the nations shall be scattered. And your plunder shall be gathered, like the gathering of the caterpillar, as the running to and fro of locusts, he shall run upon them. So that was interesting. The Lord gave me that verse. And then Lamentations also. Um, this is Lamentations 333. Um, <clears throat> For he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. So this is talking about, Lamentations 3 is the prophet's anguish and hope and how the prophets, the prophet felt, you know, he felt rash and anguish and, and you know, affliction. And then um, it says, For the Lord will not cast off forever, though he causes grief, yet he will show compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. So, to crush under one's feet all the prisoners of the earth, to turn aside the justice due a man before the face of the Most High, or subvert a man in his cause, the Lord does not approve. 
so talking about the Lord and how he doesn't willingly want to cause grief, um, but he, he will. Um, he has to do away with sin and those that cause it or, and cause destruction and um, fear and um, uh, what's the word? Affliction against the righteous. Okay, and then um, Isaiah 59 is a good chapter. The Lord led me to this chapter too. Um, so if you're separated from the Lord, if you don't know who he is, you just need to confess your sins. And first you need to believe that he is real. Um, confess your sins to him and ask him to fill you with himself, with the Holy Spirit. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. All right. So pray on that. Ask for confirmation. Post any confirmations that you have. I'd appreciate it. God bless.